Next up, we have Christopher Beto from uh, Meta talking about maps at Meta. All right. Take it away. Sound test. Can you hear me okay? Yep, you're on screen. Screen test. You can see mm -hmm. my slide. Looking great. Awesome. We're here. So, yeah, thanks for joining. I'm Chris. I work as a map data analyst at Meta. And so I'll tell you a little about, about how we look at maps at Meta, think of maps, and use maps. So the theme overall, maps, maps, maps. Uh, I like to highlight three pillars of this. And one is improving maps. Uh, so that's something we do directly a lot. Uh, we try to create new data, create new edits, directly improve the base map. Uh, we have supporting of maps in the community. So where we're not directly improving that map, we like to make it easier for others to do so and provide tools, uh, open data. And then finally, we have displaying the map. And that's making sure that the work that we do, the work that you do as a community, gets out into the hands of consumers. Uh, they may not be editing, but there's a lot of people out there viewing the map. So we like to think of it this way. We're talking about Mapping USA here. We have, let's say, 334 million people in the country. On Facebook, you have 243 million users. Instagram, 143 million, 91 million on uh, on WhatsApp. Uh, those are all just in the US. And then you have, from the last stats of December to January, something around 600 mappers average active every day in the US. And it's really interesting to think of that funnel going down of how many people are consuming OpenStreetMap uh, in little ways, and then how such a small group of mappers is also building this core data set that reaches potentially all of these people. Uh, and it's not just in our apps, it goes all the way to other apps across the US too. So that's what's really cool. But overall apps need maps, and that's why we care about maps. So some examples that you can find in different meta products, uh, Facebook business pages are really important. That's essentially a POI. And we have a little inset map showing the location. And that's using OpenStreetMap data uh, to show that context around it, the, the streets, bridges, uh, different buildings. And then the same in Instagram. Um, there's a maps part of Instagram that's becoming more and more visible. So you can actually go around and search for uh, things like coffee or ice cream and try to find POIs and you'll come across this, uh, this similarly OSM-based base map. And then finally, in, in recommendations, uh, so when someone's sharing a post and taking a location, we're also going to show OpenStreetMap there as the preferred map. Some of the more active things as well are our use of OpenStreetMap combined with other types of map data, like population data sets. Uh, that's something we do at Data for Good, which is an organization inside of Meta. So that's supported several uh, crisis response initiatives. And then you have this growing project of the WhatsApp business directory, which again is, is really exciting as kind of a POI project and also a way that businesses reach their users. And a lot of things that people want to know when they're trying to contact a business is location. How do I get there? Where is it? Uh, so this is something we really care about making visible. And coming to OpenStreetMap itself, the reason that Meta is very interested in it is because it's excellent. It is this incredible map that is up to date, constantly changing, has local knowledge from all over. And so we ask how we can make it more excellent. We can do that with more edits. We can do that by improving the quality and by enabling more people to be mappers. So anything we can do, building tools, making UX easier, UI easier, that enables people, that's our goal. So in this graphic, I have maps at Meta in the center, and you can see the, the big picture of how we think about data. So open data is extremely important, and some of that is crowdsourced. So that's where we would look at OpenStreetMap. Uh, there's also data that's crowdsourced, such as by users of Facebook or business page owners, and they volunteer location about what's located where. There's authoritative data, so you'll see some of that in the rapid editor uh, that might include like buildings that are from a, a county GIS data set. Uh, it could include address locations. And then machine learning data, uh, things like roads, sidewalks extracted from satellite. Uh, all of this gets mixed together into the, the general map that we use. 
and then it gets pushed over to the right. And that's where it reaches these apps that we talked about, as well as the future facing uh, augmented reality and virtual reality products that are also very spatial in how they work fundamentally. So unfolding that, here's a much louder and more colorful version. So you see on the left, there's all these looks at the different sources, uh, what they might look like, how they flow into one another. And then toward the center, you'll see many of the things that we're supporting that have a name and a label on them. Uh, so we've recently stepped up our support of Map Roulette, OSM Cha. We also are big supporters of the Map Libre project to help people visualize base maps. And with the Rapid Editor, uh, so you might know it by Map with AI or Rap ID, but Rap is our new name and logo, and we're really trying to make that the tool to make things as easy as possible when editing OpenStreetMap. So including a lot of updates on sidewalk mapping, and then also the daylight distribution and overture maps are different ways of structuring these data sets to get them into a base map. So quick look at Overture. Uh, one of the releases from last year was 3D Buildings. Uh, we also have the places data in Overture that comes from Facebook places. We're looking at how to make that more accessible to OpenStreetMap. Uh, I recently wrote a diary about some work on uh, making the tags interchangeable, and, and I've got some great community comments and collaboration there. Daylight map distribution. So it's a great way to consume OpenStreetMap. Uh, put it into tiles, put it into a queryable environment. Uh, if you're an Amazon AWS user, uh, you're working with S3. If you're using something like DuckDB, those are all really compatible with the way this is set up. And you can see in the bottom left, there's a strategy around this of find, fix, and import. So we spend a lot of time looking for errors in OpenStreetMap, making fixes directly back to OpenStreetMap. Uh, and then when we find fixes that the community has applied, also making sure those get into the daylight distribution. With map roulette, uh, so some of the focus we've had here is, again, making it easier to map sidewalks and crosswalks. So we recently have done quite a few projects around the globe. We use some internal uh, analytics and, and data crunching to find problems with crosswalk data, missing tags. And then we went in and highlighted um, both in internal mapathons and with community, where that needs fixing and how we can upgrade the tags and specify crosswalk types. Of course, there's always mapillary, uh, a lot of imagery coming in. We're using that to rebuild these scenes in the back end and then locate where things are on the map and share that as open data. So recently, we hit 2 billion images uh, just toward the end of last year. Uh, worldwide, always growing, and in a lot of places in the U.S. as well. Uh, Washington, D.C. was a great one. We have uh, Beta NYC doing great work collecting imagery there. Uh, quite a few companies, government organizations, various groups all contributing. And then one of the things we're trying to pull out of that these days now is also locations of sidewalks that are visible in that map of imagery, uh, as well as crosswalks where the streets crossable and help make that open data that helps improve walkability and readability of the map in terms of where can I walk, not just drive. Uh, so the Rapid Editor, uh, we've also got the Rapid 2.0 release. I definitely recommend to read the change sets. You can go to the GitHub repo for Rapid. Uh, you can find that through rapideditor.org, the website. Uh, a lot of new changes in there over the last year and quite a few planned this year. So I recommend keeping up on that and especially participating in, in the GitHub repo, uh, open an issue. If you have a feature request, we love when you find bugs and we get people who are really interactive with this. Uh, so we're, we're hoping to have a great relationship with the users to, to react to issues, develop new ideas here. And using Rapid with the tasking manager, we were able to do quite a few projects. So again, uh, Beta NYC helped collaborate with us through some great work uh, in part of Brooklyn. Uh, Washington DC on the right, we got almost completely mapped. I think there were two unmapped squares in that one uh, as of today. And then Tempe, Arizona uh, in the Phoenix area. Also, we made quite a bit of progress on adding sidewalks there with the community. So all these places in blue and green you see are, are newly mapped uh, with sidewalks either validated or, or mapped where they didn't exist before. 
And we want to keep improving that and make sure that sidewalks are something that exists very strongly in OpenStreetMap. So overall rundown of our highlights, uh, we covered most of this, but launching Rapid 2.0. Uh, the Maplory app, we're planning to launch a 2.0 version also. You can drag and drop videos from devices that have geotech videos now to Mapillary. Overture Places data has launched. Uh, a global entity reference system, a kind of universal ID system for Overture data has released, which is very helpful with matching the sourcing when it goes into OpenStreetMap. Uh, LiDAR building heights, Google buildings that were shared as open data uh, in Overture. And the daylight distribution has gone from once a month to twice a month release. And finally, Map Libre and several Mapathons. So overall, that sums it up for how we think about maps at Meta. You can check out the website for more information. You can always email us at osmmeta.com if you have questions, ideas, anything at all. Uh, we're happy to hear from you. So thanks for your attention and look forward to the rest of the weekend with you. Thanks, Chris. We are about a minute over. So we have four minutes for this break. Um, anyone can reach out to Chris uh, through the OSM US Slack um, and probably other places if you, if you search them. See you in a few minutes.